Coming up on the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. Let me focus on the 80-20. 80% eat really good, clean, healthy foods, but give myself a little bit of flexibility 20% of the time so I don't feel like this constant battle with my willpower. And that was the turning point. It yeah. was like, okay, I'm going to eat good stuff. So salad, in the past, I'm like, oh, I don't really like it because I don't like the dressing and now it's like I have my salad is packed with good stuff. I'll have salmon. I'll have different types of greens. I'll have all these great things in it. And maybe the dressing won't like I love honey mustard. So I have a little bit of honey mu mustard dressing. So like out of the five things, four of them are really good. <laughs> and the one is like, eh. so it's like 80 percent right. good. But at least I'm eating the salad instead of having sandwiches and other things. So that's been that was really the turning point. The, the nutrition, just keeping it really simple reducing the amount of gluten, sugar, and dairy I have by like 95%. Hello, and welcome to the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. I'm Brian Grin, and I'm here to give you actionable tips to get your body back to what it once was 5, 10, even 15 years ago. Each week, I'll give you an in-depth interview with a health expert from around the world to cut through the fluff and get you long-term sustainable results. This week, I interviewed entrepreneur, author, and speaker, Ryan Lee. He has been in the health and wellness space for over 25 years and most recently started Rewind, a healthy greens superfood mix company. We discuss Ryan's health journey of losing over 40 pounds and overcoming arthritis, along with his 80-20 health rule, how not to yo-yo diet, how to eat healthy without breaking the bank, ways to overcome stress, his micro workout, keys to being productive, and is one tip to get your body back to what it once was. I've known Ryan for a while now, and he gets a lot of great actionable advice. I know you'll enjoy this interview, and thanks so much for listening. All right, welcome to the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. My name is Brian Grin, and I have a guest, Ryan Leon. Welcome to the show, Ryan. How you doing, Brian? I am ready to get lean and eat clean. <laughs> thanks for coming on. I've known Ryan for... Um, Gosh, I went to his house in Connecticut. Uh, I don't know how, how many years it was, maybe seven, eight years ago. Yeah, yeah, it was years ago. Uh huh. And he helped me launch uh, some businesses. And um, Ryan's got quite the story. So I, I figure I'd open it up and uh, you can uh, tell the audience sort of your your journey through health and and even and through starting businesses and things like that. Okay. Wow, that's a <laughs> that's a big question. Yeah, <laughs> um, I know. Where do I begin? Uh, well. I'll, I'll kind of cut to the, to the good stuff. Okay. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur. I started my first online business back in the late 90s, uh, so I was pretty early in the game. My background was health and fitness, and I worked for six years in a children's rehab hospital. Um, went to school at night, got my master's in exercise physiology, and I, I specialized in training young athletes. And I was a, I was a college athlete, um, ran track all four years, and was always fit, you know, always in shape, always worked out. Then my wife and I, we got married in 2000 and then had our first kid 2003, our second 2005, our third in 2007, <laughs> our fourth in 2009. Oh. And what happens is by around 2009, um, after my fourth was born, only about six months later, my mom was diagnosed with cancer and then quickly passed away. Um, and then one of my businesses uh, basically fell apart. So I had all this stress happening with my fourth child, losing my mom. She was only 63. Um, all of a sudden, financial challenges with the business. We go from making millions of dollars a month to millions of dollars in debt and all these debts to pay off with the, with the company. Um, it affected my health and it affected my nutrition. And I was definitely stress eating. And I remember my, my, my crack. <laughs> uh, I never did drugs. Don't drink. Um, it was, it was M&Ms like that. I remember every night uh, I would get like a bowl of M&Ms and just eat. Uh, and I was just eating crap and gluten. I didn't care. I ate everything. I gained about, I don't know, 35, 40 pounds. And all of a sudden I started to notice I, w I was trying to play a little tennis. <clears throat> My feet hurt. It was really painful. And I went to the podiatrist. I went to the ortho, ortho, the orthopedist. Mm -hmm. Um I went to a chiropractor, went to physical therapy. Then all of a sudden I woke up one day and I couldn't even move my hands. I couldn't bend my, my, my hands, wow. couldn't bend my fingers and uh, went to more doctors, got more tests. They couldn't figure it out. Finally, one of my buddies who's a doctor said, try a, um, 
try this other physician. I know the, uh, oh God, rheumatologist. <laughs> and, and in, in two seconds, he looked at me, asked me a couple questions said, oh, you have an autoimmune disorder. It's called psoriatic arthritis. They did some blood tests it's, and it's hard to specifically diagnose, but it's in this general family of this, in, these inflammatory diseases. Right. And he said, we need to put you on a, this really powerful drug called methotrexate. I said, well, what is that? He's like, well, it's kind of like a chemo drug. Just make sure you're not around anyone who gets sick. I said, doc, I've got four kids. You know, someone's got a cold. He's like, well, we'll just every, every two weeks, you got to come in for blood tests. I'm like, there's got to be another way. He's like, nope, this is it. We don't know what causes it. So I went on this mission to figure out what can I do to reverse my health? And that was the beginning of kind of figuring it all out saying, okay, I've got to simplify. I've got to change things. And that was the, the transformation where everything began back on this journey to health. Wow. Yeah. You know, you hear about stress eating a lot and mm -hmm. I think it's something that's really common. I'm eating such an emotional thing. And, um, what, when was that in 2009 where you sort of started? To yeah. 2009, 2010. Um, so the, the first thing I did, so then I went to a naturopath after I was diagnosed and yeah. he said, no more sugar, no more dairy, no more gluten ever. Hmm. I'm like, all right, well, that's going to kind of be tight. He's like, and take these shakes, these green shakes. And I'm like, God, I, uh, I remember I did it for like two days yeah. and the shakes were making me so, no they were so, I couldn't drink them. It was that bad. I would hold my nose and I still was like gagging after. Right. Uh, and the whole no dairy, no sugar, no gluten. I made it, I don't know, 10 days. It was almost impossible because it's in everything. Right. Uh, yeah, gluten so is, yeah. be, between you know, sugar, gluten and dairy it, and we'd go out to eat and I, I couldn't eat anything. <clears throat> Even the salad dressing like mm. would have some gluten. So but I did feel better. Yeah. I'm like, OK, so there's definitely something to this. So. I, you know, for, for another two years, back and forth and back, trying different things and <clears throat> going extreme with one thing, going all carnivore, going paleo, intermittent fasting, things would work for a little bit. And then I'd fall back in some old habits until finally <clears throat> I said, let me just give myself a break. Let me do, let me focus on the 80, 20, 80% 80 eat really good, clean, healthy foods but give myself a little bit of flexibility 20% of the time. So I don't feel like this constant battle with my willpower. And that was the turning point. It yeah. was like, okay, I'm going to eat good stuff. So salad in the past, I'm like, oh, I don't really like it. Cause I don't like the dressing. And now it's like, I have my salad is packed with good stuff. I'll have salmon. I'll have different types of greens. I'll have all these great things in it. And maybe the dressing won't like, I love honey mustard. So I have a little bit of honey mu mustard dressing. So like, out of the five things, four of them are really good. Mm -hmm. And the one is like, eh. so it's like 80% right. good. But at least I'm eating the salad instead of having sandwiches and other things. So that's been, that was really the turning point. The, the nutrition, just keeping it really simple, reducing the amount of gluten, sugar, and dairy I have by like 95%. I almost, I rarely have dairy anymore. I switched um, from regular milk. If I do have a latte or something, it's oat milk. Um, even they now have oat milk, oat milk ice cream, um, sugar. I really don't have much either. And gluten, I try to have as little as possible. So <clears throat> that was my nutritional thing. And between that and then exercise and, and focusing with exercise on workouts, I can do consistently at home, 20 minutes, more bang mm -hmm. for the buck. I do treadmill high incline as a walk. And every two minutes I jump off and do strength exercises, push-ups, pull-ups, core work, jump back on. I do like a circuit takes 25 minutes tops. I do that five to six days a week. <clears throat> Other, and my wife and I walk every time it's nice outside. And I try to go to the track. Now I start now that the weather here as we're recording, this is nice in Connecticut. So I've been outside sprinting again. Oh. So yeah, it's been, uh, <clears throat> it's been good just being consistent, knowing that, okay, so I'm not getting the craziest high intensity workout, you know, I used to do CrossFit a little bit. Of course, I always got hurt doing that. Yeah. Uh, so just doing things that feel good now that I'm, I'm going to be 49, you know, I don't need to push myself so hard. And uh, <clears throat> I'm back down to the same weight I was in high school, the same waist size. And I feel great. My symptoms are, I wouldn't say 100% gone, I'd say 
90%, 95%, I feel I could play every sport. Again, I can go on the track and sprint, which is the doctor basically said, you're not really going to be able to do full activity anymore. Um, so I'm right. able to do that stuff. And the only thing is once in a while, like if I'm, if there's a stressful time going on or maybe the weather's a little humid, I, I might get a little bit of a flare up for a day or so, right. but otherwise I, f- I feel great. Yeah. I love that. I love the fact that you just kept it simple. I think that's so important when you're starting any type of diet or food program or whatever it is. And like the 80, 20 rule is such a great thing to, to go by. I think what's happening nowadays is these, all these different movements like, you know, carnivore and mm-hmm. I have quite a bit of keto and carnivore people on the podcast and yeah. I'm, I'm a proponent of it, but I don't think you need to go extreme one way or the other. Um, it's like anything else. And even for the workouts, uh, when we can talk about that as well, but I love that 80, 20 rule when it comes to eating. Yeah. It, you know, I always say this too, cause, cause after this, I got back into my health. I started a nutrition company called rewind and it's all about rewinding the years, knocking years off your body, rewinding the clock. We have, as you can see, anyone watching the video, we got the whole fun retro theme here in my mm-hmm. space. Um, <clears throat> but <clears throat> everyone's different. And you've got to find what works for you. And we get questions. Well, I do keto. I said, well, you know what? If that's working for you and you feel great and you stick with it and you love it, then great. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to judge you. You know, uh, everyone, everyone follows their own path. But what I found in general is when these, these quote unquote diets are so restrictive, all you're doing is thinking about what you can't eat. Like, you know, every diet book. And within the first five pages, they have that one page that says forbidden foods, mm-hmm. foods to never eat again, foods to avoid. And it's right. always the same stuff, right? You can never have a cookie for the rest of your life, a piece of cake, ice cream, dairy, gluten. Yeah. And now it's like certain types of vegetables. You can't have spinach as ox- oxalate. You can't have a nightshade. You're down to like two things you can eat. <laughs> and even that, there's no one that agrees on it. You know, I have one buddy who is he eats almost his entire diet as carnivore all meat that's it meat beef pork that's it no veggies at all and then there and he says he feels great then there's other people who are vegan and no meat obviously no meat products and they feel great (laughs) you can't and and each side is going to say the other one is the worst thing for you so there's nothing that people agree i think maybe if there's one thing everyone agrees on on every single side of the argument, no matter what, I can't think of a diet that encourages processed crappy carbs. Yeah. I can't think of, a, think of a diet that says, you know what? You should eat cookies. Not you can, but you should eat cookies and cake and pasta and bread. Like that's the best thing for you. I don't know of a diet that says that. <laughs> so I think everyone could agree that right. just eliminating or reducing those overly processed carbs there's real, there's no nutritional benefit. There's nothing, there's, there's no protein. There's nothing really good for it. It doesn't energy. It's just, that's the stuff to, re- you start reducing that. And obviously soda, right? There's no diet that says drink all the soda you can. Um, you start tr- reducing that and you'll probably feel better right away. And obviously look, the other biggies too. If you're having a lot of alcohol at night, you're having three, four drinks, all those empty calories, um, obviously smoking, you know, please don't smoke. That's not good for you. Uh, but, but there's no smoking diet. <laughs> yeah, there's no smoking diet. Although, uh, I, I mean, the, my, so my mom passed away from lung cancer. She used to be, you know, she grew up in the, in the 50s and 60s when everyone smoked. And, and then it, it would suppress their appetite. Right? right. So when I was young, well, she, she smoked all through my pregnancy. And even growing up, oh, wow. she, she smoked two to three packs a day. But she stopped uh, in the mid 80s and never smoked again for like another, you know, 25 years. But it's mm-hmm. still, you know, still ended up uh, still ended up getting lung cancer. But she definitely would always say, oh, I was thinner when I was smoking. You know, so maybe there is a smoking diet, although you'll be thinner, but you'll die a lot earlier, which probably <laughs> is not the best trade off. Yeah. Uh, but just a, a lot of common sense stuff. So you, you've got to do what feels right for your body and figure out what, what I recommend is people do 24 hours just try to eliminate one thing. So in our, in our Facebook group, we'll do 24 hour challenges. Okay. Let's all go 24 hours and have no gluten and then see if you feel any difference. We've done that with dairy and it's incredible how some people will say, wow, I went 24 hours without dairy and I feel amazing. I mean, I, when I started reducing dairy, Mm. I felt better almost instantly. 
because I was so used to drinking so much milk and I grew up on cereal You know, I'm a kid of the yeah. 80s yeah. Uh, that Me I was too. so used to always <laughs> feeling bloated and gassy. That felt like the norm. I'm like, that's how you always feel. And then when I stopped having it, I'm like, oh, my God, I, I don't have stomach aches anymore. I don't feel like I have to run to the bathroom every 20 minutes. Uh, yeah, I used to be a, a big time cereal eater and, and just cutting out that. I mean, this was years ago, but like I used to like have a, a, at least a two to three bowls a day back. Oh, yeah. Back in the day. <laughs> yep. Oh, my God. I, I had it all the time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Two to three bowls in the morning, bowl for snacks. Sometimes I'd have cereal for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> dinner. Uh, right. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was easy. Right. It's something I could always make by myself. Uh, so I loved it. But yeah, I I. I I mean, I never have cereal anymore. Um, every, once in a while, I'll do like um, like gluten free with oat milk, which tastes just as good, by the way. Yeah, yeah, no, and um, and I know you talk about it, like there's all these like elimination diets. You know, you talk about uh, carnivore, and I think that <clears throat> what might be a good idea for most people is if they are having some symptoms like autoimmune or arthritis or things like that, perhaps to do an elimination diet, like you mentioned, and see what foods are sort of yeah hampering them and react and they're reacting bad to because some people can handle plants and some people cannot and they get psoriasis and things like this or skin right issues. so i think that's the most important thing is you can always add back in you know mm -hmm. yeah and what's what's really important if you're doing an elimination diet is you have to do one thing at a time right because if if tomorrow you eliminate gluten and dairy and then you feel better well you don't know if it was one or the other Right. It might have been the gluten that you stopped that you feel better. It might have been the dairy. We are all different and our bodies do respond differently. So you have to do what feels right to you and what feels good to you. Um, but I, again, coming back to that theme of if it's so restrictive where you wake up in the morning and you're just playing defense all, all day and all you're thinking of the things you can't eat. I can't have this. I can't have this. I can't, you can't go out now all of a sudden you can't go out with your friends. You know, they're going to have pizza and you can't go out for pizza. like now you're miserable. And then to me, I say, well, what's the point of that, too? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, you want that balance for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's and, and I know like I plan ahead. So if we're going out with another family, it's like at a pizza place. And I know they just have pizza. I'm thinking ahead. I'm like, well, OK, there's that tonight. So. And there's maybe there's no gluten free option or there's no other salad or whatever. There's one there's one place that we've gone to where they don't even have salad. <laughs> they have right. salad pizza. Oh, um, yeah. So I'll, I'll plan ahead. I'll say, like, OK, well, I know dinner's not going to be the greatest. So let me eat 100 percent clean all day. Let me get a workout in. let me drink extra water. Let me just make sure I have a really good clean salad for lunch um, so that dinner I can give myself a little bit of a break and say, you know what, that'll be my 20 percent tonight. I'm not going to gorge myself. I'm not going to have an entire pie myself, right. but I'll have a slice or two um, and have water. So you could still have, you know, I guess the, you can still have your quote unquote cake and eat it too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, when you go into the hole, you could never have this again for the rest of your life. You're, you, you start freaking out and then, uh, and then you eventually crash and then that, you know, the cycle continues. Right. And you then, talk about, that's like yo-yo dieting, right? Oh my God. I mean, right. you, you, we, I've been a health guy for 25 years and it's, it, it never changes. Someone goes on something, they go, they say, I'm quote unquote going on a diet that whenever someone says that it never works, it never right. lasts because right. going, saying I'm going on a diet is like this temporary, like I'm going on a roller coaster. It's, no, you don't go on a diet. You say, I'm going to change my life and let me just make some small tweaks, some small little habits. But uh, uh, unless you do a program and you said, this is it, this is, I feel great. It's working for me. And then you stick with it. But most often you'll try something. It's ultra restrictive. Then you start eating something else. You fall off the wagon. You gain back all the weight you lost plus more. Right. And then, you know, a couple months later, you're looking for the next thing. I mean, how many, how many diets have we seen over the years come and go the fads quite a bit. And, uh, one thing that I'm a <clears throat> big proponent of is fasting. Um, <clears throat> when I first heard about fasting, I was like, Oh, you know, all I know about fasting is for the Jewish holiday. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, and I do that every year. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yom Kippur. <clears throat> exactly. And so, um, but what I do like about fasting is 
yes, it's restrictive. Obviously you're not eating, but it also keeps it simple too. And the fact that yeah. you know, I tell people, even if you don't want to skip a meal, you know, just don't snack throughout the day and just give your body time and, and sort of to heal and give yourself a break between meals. Um, do you in, in, incorporate any type of fasting in your life? You know, it's funny. I tried for a while. I tried intermittent fasting um, and I wouldn't eat. You know, I would, I would have my last meal at six at night and then I wouldn't eat again till I don't remember like if it was around 10 noon, 10 a.m. or noon. Well, if it depends how you know, you, you got. This yeah, I think I was going long and I was getting too hungry, but I, I kind yeah. of in a way almost intermittent fast ish. Right. Um, I mean, I have my last meal. We usually eat pretty early in my house, you know, Me 530. Too. Yeah. Um, and then I don't, and I, I don't, I never have breakfast anyway anymore. Oh, okay. Um, but I'll usually have either, either a glass of my greens hot or, or a coffee or something. Um, but I kind of fast anyway. Um, and then I'll eat an early lunch at like usually around 11 AM my time. Um, so, so you're having two meals a day. Yeah. Yeah. I have yeah. two meals a day. I have, a, I have lunch and I have dinner. Um, and lunch is pretty much always the same. It's usually a salad, uh, with some kind of protein and the protein is, is usually seafood bit. Like I love salmon. Um, mm -hmm. and my, f one of my favorites, which is the healthiest food in the world. And very few people eat it because they think it's going to be disgusting. Although it's not sardines. Oh. Um, I do, I do the boneless sardines. So you don't have the fish eyes and bones and all that stuff, even though there's, I know there's extra nutrients in that, but, um, yeah, I get the salmon great. fillets packed in olive oil. So I use the olive oil as the dressing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I open the can, put the sardines on it, use the olive oil, mix it all around in the greens. And it's quick. It's easy. It's not expensive. You get a can of sardines for like two bucks. Right. Everyone talks about, oh, it's so expensive to eat healthy. Right. You go to McDonald's and you get uh, whatever the meal is. It's probably like six or seven dollars anyway. A can of sardines <clears throat> and a serving of greens is probably three, three to four bucks, right. if that. You know, it's cheaper and it's better for you. And you get you get the protein, you get the good omegas, you've got just everything right there. And it takes 30 seconds to put together. So that's that's usually my lunch and dinner. It depends. Like if I if I feel if I'm not feeling great, if I feel like I'm getting, you know, some symptoms coming back, then I go another salad for dinner. Um, but otherwise, it's usually, again, protein, veggies. I try to just simple. Simple works. Yeah. And you talk, yeah, no, that's a good point because a lot of people say, oh, it's so, you know, to eat healthy, you know, I mean, obviously if you're buying grass fed, grass finished ribeyes every night, it's yeah. probably going to, it's probably going to add up, right. but you know, sardines, even like, um, sometimes I'll get these mussels that are at whole foods and these little packages <clears throat> it's packed with protein and, and B vitamins and things like that, that, yeah. uh, you know, you know what this you know, you're spending four or five bucks on one of those things. You're not like breaking the bank. <clears throat> right. And, and even, um, you know, while it's, it's better to have the wild caught salmon, you can sure. get packaged salmon too, or canned salmon okay. and you throw it together with some veggies and you've got a quick meal again, a, f a few bucks get, they have, they have this stuff at, you know, Walmart this can of sardines at Walmart is a dollar 99. Right. I mean, uh, you, and I, there are times when I'm just, I, I need a quick meal and I'll just open up the can and just eat it right out of the can. There yeah. you go. It's, you know, you got I mean, everything you need and, no. and the bottom of the, the bottom of the food chain too. So you don't have the, the potential mercury issues too. Right. Exactly. You're not having like ahi tuna. Every yeah. Night. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, now you talked back about stress eating. What other things and how you changed your diet and things, what other things did you do? to sort of overcome or, and help yourself with stress and, 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 you know, and to, to that you do this day as well. Just starting every day with gratitude, um, you know, writing down what I'm grateful for. And it's always my family. It's always my wife and my kids and just trying to appreciate everything I have really. It's, it's a, it's a mindset thing. Yeah. You, know, you can't, because in life we can't control all the other outside circles. Like we can't control, that the world got COVID or who's president or your tax rate. Like you, there's a lot of stuff just, or you can't control if, if a jerk just cut you off in traffic. The only thing you can control is how you, um, how you respond to it. And we, the minute you realize we're in 100% control of how we respond to the world and other people, you're just like, 
I'm good. You know, uh, you're able to handle it better. Stress is just such a mental thing. Um, making sure also that I'm getting in my workouts each day, uh, and at least trying to get outside and walking and just getting time off offline too. Right. Uh, when I go home, I shut my phone off, shut everything off. I'm with my kids. I'm present with them. Right. Uh, and giving yourself permission to unplug your, you know, literal batteries, like your, your, your body, your mind, your brain, and doing things that relax you and finding hobbies and whatever it is. Right. And, you know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. So in the world of entrepreneurship now, everyone talks about hustle, hustle, grind, work 24 seven. If you're not grinding, you're just dying, like all this stuff. And you know what? I like coming home. And then after the kids go to sleep, going downstairs, turning on the TV and watching an hour of TV, like mindless TV. I don't have to think of things. I'm not building my business. I'm just, right. that's my downtime. And I'm okay with that. Right. And, and you should be okay with it. Now, if you're watching nine hours of TV a day, <laughs> then you're not getting anything done and you complain you have no time. Well, th- th- you're, you're probably a little bit out of whack. Yeah. And I love, uh, you know, like going for walks, such a simple thing. I mean, I have two dogs and just getting out in the morning, getting some sun. I mean, these are simple things, but they go a long way. And you talk about unplugging. I mean, like I actually, I was on a walk this morning and I see the same guy and he's walking his dog, but he's walking his dog with his phone <laughs> and he's yeah. looking down at his phone. And I think the dog just walking him. And yeah. I'm thinking to myself, I mean, come on, a 20 minute walk. Do you have to really be tied down to your phone? I know. Like, like le- leave your phone at home. Um, I don't, I don't sleep with the phone in my room. Um, you, we're just so, it's so addictive. It really is. And we yeah. feel like we're always on and there's always this constant stress. And I'm just, I'm, I'm really trying hard and being more mindful of just leaving the phone at home and not having it. And even when we have dinner with our family, no phones at the table, just like un- unplug un- uh, you've got to, uh, because you're going to lose your mind. So just simple, simple. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's why, you know, maybe I feel so good with the whole 80s stuff. It was back before we had the internet, before we had mobile phones. Um, I miss those times. You know, uh, yeah. It's the pager. Great. I had a pager. <laughs> oh, I did too. In the, uh, in <laughs> and like the was, mid 90s, I had one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I that remember was nice that. because you got, you know, you got your alert, but, you know, I remember getting him. I'd be on the golf course. All right. I'll call him when I'm done. So, you know, right. like, you know, right. I need to pick it up right well, now. Yeah, look, of course, there's incredible things with technology. I mean, what we're doing right now, right? And you could look up any fact and you could buy movie tickets. Like there's so much stuff you can do. That's it's great. But there's something to be said about uh, having to work for something. Like if we we were younger, we wanted to go see our friends. You'd try to call around and if they picked up, they did. And if not, you didn't know. And then we get on our bikes and ride around the block and knock on doors till we found our friends. Right. Uh, Or we were older in high school. We would all meet at the gas station, the AMP. And we called it Ampum. Let's all meet at Ampum at nine o'clock. And then we figure out where we're going. Uh, There's something to be said about that Uh, or waiting each week for the Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, So I, I always try to instill some of the, the, the old school stuff in my kids too. They love it. Uh, (laughs) I'm sure they do. And how yeah. do you, have you instilled some some eating good eating habits with your kids? I know that oh, yeah. can be tough. Yeah. 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 We um they all cook now. Uh even you know, even my eleven year old last night made himself dinner. Mm. Uh there's always vegetables at meals. Uh we always have fruit, whether it's apples, bananas, pears, uh, peaches. We there's always fresh fruit and vegetables in the house. Um, and we always try to have balanced meals, you know. Look. Do, do we get them some fast food sometimes? Yeah. It's everything in moderation, you know, right. including moderation. And I, I think if you grew up in a house where there's no fast food ever, you've never had a nugget, you never this. If your kids go to college, the minute they go, they're going to lose their minds. Right. Uh, so yeah. w- we just teach them responsibility and trying to eat right. And, and, uh, and they all like cooking and baking. So uh, it's fun. Yes, yeah, so we definitely. And, and the other thing we've instilled in them, too is you've got to try all different types of food. Uh, Right. Which is something that when I was a kid, my, my dad still has like no palate at all. Zero. He, he wants chicken every meal (laughs) and he says, make it as, as dry as possible. (laughs) He says, he says it every time he goes, I want it extra well done. And he, he was really, 
Mm. Oh yeah. He goes, run it over with a truck. <laughs> like he wants it like that. Uh, I mean, we had, we had no flavor, nothing. I didn't have any Mexican food growing up. I remember when I started dating my, my now wife, when she's my girlfriend, I was 23. We went to like a Wendy. She said, Oh, I'm going to get chili. I'm like, Oh, I've never had chili. She's mm. like, what? You're like 23. You never had chili. We didn't have any of that stuff. So my kids have everything. Right. Um, we've tried everything. They're not going to be the kids who go to a party and be like, oh, I only have chicken fingers and mac and cheese. Um, right. They're the ones ordering all the, all the different stuff. And even and my oldest, she, my oldest daughter, my 17 year old and my 13 year old love hot sauce. Oh. And my oldest one puts hot sauce on everything. And I think wow. that's cool. I'm like, yeah. all right, go. Yeah, <laughs> go for it. I can't handle that. But you know. yeah, that, you know, I didn't have any heat at all. I don't want to sweat people. when I'm eating. No. <laughs> Although now, now I appreciate a little bit. I don't put hot sauce on, but if, I, if we go out to a nice meal and has a little bit of heat, like a little, mm -hmm. I, I like it. It gives it a little bit more flavor. I feel now. I never thought that way in the past, but now I like it a little bit. Um, I wanted to touch back on what you mentioned earlier regarding like your, your workouts. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so key. And this is something that I've sort of grasped onto during the whole quarantine was, you know, I used to go to the, go to the gym and be there for like an hour and a half. And mm -hmm. it's like, now with the quarantine, I actually just do like, literally, like you said, I do 20, 30 minute workouts and I'm done. Yeah. I actually do more volume during the week. I'm not working out. You know, I used to work out maybe three, four times a week because it took so long. Now I'm working out like probably almost six days a week, but I'm just doing these quick little workouts and getting it done. And I love it because there's really no excuses when you got it. You know, who can't fit in a 20 minute workout? Yeah. I, I mean, I like it. I like the consistency of it. Um, right. I mean, I, I'd go through spurts where I'll join a gym. I'll go for a few months. And then, well, this was in the past, right? Before the pandemic, I would go for a few months. And then I'm like, well, why am I doing this? Driving, having to shower, change of clothes. It's like just a pain because my, my office here is um, two and a half miles from my house. Right. Like I could just go home and we have a treadmill in our room. I have a couple of dumbbells, some kettlebells. That's all I need. So I, I like keeping it simple. And I figured if I'm going to work out, all I need is 20, 25 minutes anyway. And let me do workouts that give me the most bang for my buck. What are the most important things at, you know, when you start getting older, our cardiovascular health, right? We want to maintain Muscle. strength, right? right? Um, endurance, flexibility, joint mobility. So right. how do I combine all that stuff? And that's where I found, I figured I'm like, all right, well, if I do the treadmill at the high incline, high incline walk for a couple minutes and make it like little mini circuits, then I pause it, jump off. Mm -hmm. I usually do pull-ups, push-ups, core, come back on. And I do that for eight circuits. So it's a full mile of walking and it's eight sets of exercise. So right. at the end of the day, you do decent volume and it takes, I think it, it's like 24 minutes is the right. whole workout. And I'm done. And I know like, all right, I'm getting home at 11 o'clock in the morning. I'm done and showered by like 1130. And, right. and I feel great. I, I don't, I, everyone has different priorities. You know, some, some, guys want to be like big bodybuilder dudes and all this stuff. But the way I look at it is as you, if you really, really think about it, unless you live, I guess in Miami beach and you're a single guy or girl always out, you know, on the prowl, how many times in public do you really have your shirt off anyway? I, I mean, a handful of times, you know, when you're swimming a little, but we have our shirt on 99%. So if you look good in a shirt, like you don't, what, what people don't realize is when you see the fitness models, the people on the cover of, of men's health and men's fitness, I know a lot of those guys. Um, a lot of them are my friends and colleagues. It is insane how much they have to train for. They'll, they'll know. They're like, all right, in two months, I have a cover shoot. They torture themselves. And when they take the shoot, they are so, they're at the unhealthiest. You know, 4% body fat right. is really, really hard mm -hmm. to maintain really hard to maintain. Uh, you have to be dedicated to it. You have to watch everything you eat. One, one of my, uh, one of my best clients, um, and a good friend of mine for 15 years, Jeff Cavalier has a company called athlean X. He's probably the number one fitness YouTuber now. Um, mm -hmm. and he used to rent space for me here in new Canaan. Mm. So we have lunch together. And I remember a couple of years ago, we're sitting there having lunch and he is ripped, like ripped to the core abs, all this stuff. And he's mid forties. And we were talking about dessert. I said, you, there's got to be dessert you love, Jeff. He goes, oh, yeah, I love uh, carrot cake. I'm like, oh, man, how often do you have that? And I thought he was going to say, you know, I only have it once a week. He goes, oh, I have it like, you know, like once, yeah, maybe like once a year. Mm -hmm. That's it. 
I mean, that's how that's how focused you have to be to look like that. <laughs> right, right. 365. Um, right. It's hard. It's really hard. And to do it for three or four times a, a year, you take your shirt off. To me, it's not worth it. It's not. I you could probably you could see a little bit of my abs coming through, and I'm good with that. But you know, I I could wear a pair of jeans. I I feel good. Right. I'm happy. Right. No, I agree. And especially as you get like, I'm 40, right? So like, I think the big key, and this is what I actually found through uh, working out at home was I started using something called an X3, X3 bar. I don't know if you've heard of it. I had the, the CEO on and um, it, it's all bands. <clears throat> it's mm -hmm. resistance bands, but it's tough. It's not easy, but you just go, you know, you go hard and you're done. And just like, it's so much easier on my joints because, you know, you spend an hour, hour and a half in the gym after a while, especially as you get older, I used to have elbow, some elbow issues, some knee yeah. issues. Yeah. So now I think the key is, and I'm sure you would agree is, okay, when you do anything, like I stopped playing basketball, I don't want to get hurt <laughs> when I do. Things, yeah. You know, it's not, it's not worth it. And, right. and, um, you know, growing up in this, in the fitness industry and I had the, the world's first strength and conditioning membership site. I knew all the strength and conditioning guys from, you know, 23, 24 years ago. Yeah. There's not one, not one that I know from all those years ago that did heavy lifting, like heavy squats, heavy bench, all that heavy stuff. Right. Every single one without exception have had over the past years, really bad injuries where they need surgery, knees, back, elbow, shoulder, because it's, they do high you know, high intensity, high rest for so many years, right. it builds muscle, but it also, you know, it's, <laughs> you got to find that balance. Yeah, you bit. do. Yeah. So I'm, I'm all about keep staying lean and having longevity, um, right. as opposed to trying to bulk up, you know, if you're trying to bulk up different story, uh, but just be prepared. You're going to have those pains that creep up. And, and when you start hitting your late forties, fifties, sixties, what seemed like a good time in your twenties and thirties, you're like, Oh man, I shouldn't have done it. Cause now I can't even like, you know, I can't <laughs> even move my arms. <laughs> I wanted to ask you this. I, um, I mean, you've been in the health and wellness industry for a while. You also are an entrepreneur and have, you have freedom owner of freedom mm -hmm. and a rewind, which is, um, green supplements. <clears throat> what would you say? Like if you were telling someone that I know we're not, this is sort of off the topic a little bit, but keys to productivity, um, in any area, but you know, in business and things like that. And, um, yeah. and having sort of a balance between family and business. Well, the mind shift for me with my business is just building the business around my family. That's it. Everything I do, I run it through that filter. Is it, you know, high, what's the profit and what's the hassle? If it's high hassle, I don't care if it's high profit, I'm not doing it. So it's gotta be, for me, it's gotta be low hassle, high profit. So everything has to run through that filter and how much time is this going to take away from me and my family? Uh, if it's taking time away, I, I'm not going to do it. So I build my, my life around my family. The way I do it tactically is first thing in the morning, I do the things that are going to move my business forward the most, the biggest levers, which is not sitting around and, and reading Facebook for two hours or just answering emails all day. That's not going to be the best use of my time. The best use of my time for my business is our ads and our uh, e email newsletters. So that's the first thing I do. I go, I get focused, I shut off all other instant messages, all the, all the stuff that's going to distract me, and I do the big things so that by 10, 11 in the morning, I'm pretty much done with my day. I could end it there and be good and everything's going to maintain and even grow a little bit as opposed to all this other stuff. I mean, that's it. Yeah. It's that big, th that big, big thing, doing that first, and, but figuring out what it is. And each business is going to be different. Um, and what's the most important thing in your life? Making that, making that, is this, what's your goal? You know, is this, is what I'm doing, everything you do is either moving you closer to your goal or further away from your goal. If you want to build your, you know, your company to X amount of dollars and you're faced with this, this other opportunity, is that moving you closer to it or further away? And if it's moving you further away, you don't do it. Yeah. I love that. Cause like I, I, I don't know if you have you read the book called The One Thing. Of course, I've read it like every time <laughs> Cause, cause I feel distracted. It's it's so funny you bring that up, Ryan. <laughs> it re it really is funny because this morning, um, it's a great book. I was faced with with another opportunity, uh, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's. I mean, it's it's a big one, but is it? And I'm I'm going through that. Man, it's going to move me though. It it 
might move me further away from my goal. So on the way, so I, w- I went to the coffee shop this morning on the way back to my office to record this. I started listening to the one thing again for like the, like the ninth or 10th time. I got, I, j- I <laughs> just started. It's so funny that you bring that up. Yeah. Cause that, that's my, that's like my reset. Whenever I feel like I'm getting off track, I listen to that book and it brings me right back. Yeah. Cause you started talking. I'm like, God, I'm like that. I have that book like next to my dresser, you know, on my dresser. And I go, I go back to that because it's so important. I'm like you, like if I don't get it done in the morning, things start, start to slip a little bit. Yeah. So I think it's so important to find those times where you're most productive and do the things that will move you, you know, in the, you know, the biggest possible way. Right. You, you, it, especially that one, like the book, the one thing, like what's that one thing. And yeah. You know, if you have, my sister has a real estate company. I said, well, what's the most important thing? She said, getting, you know, the building, getting the exclusives with the landlords. I says, okay, so every morning you should have a list of the 10 landlords you're going to reach out to. Like, that's the one thing. That's the thing. And every, every business is going to be different. And whatever your job is, like whatever your lifestyle, figure that thing out and then do that first. Right. Yeah. That's, I love that. that's the key. Um, uh, avoid all the other little distractions. Because there are plenty of them, <laughs> plenty of them, and you know, I, I notice even for myself, I'll write a to-do list. But these are like mind. A lot of the things you get them done, but they're sort of mindless things. Save those things for like later. At least for me, like the mindless stuff that I'd like to save for the afternoon, and I try to do the most productive things first thing. At least for me, that's how I work the best. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, me too. And and yeah. there's some people who have the opposite. They'll, and I remember Brian Tracy. I read a, a book years ago called Eat the Frog, where you find those things you don't want to do and you do those first and get it over with. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I feel like when I'm at my best brain power, I want to do the big stuff first. And the other things could just fade away. Well, I, one of my buddies was writing on his Facebook wall. This was a couple months ago. Um, he said, you know, people ask me all the time, how do I deal with this? And how do I deal with that? And, and all these different things. Like one was, you know, how do you, re- how do you reply to every email? And then he goes, I don't. You know, how do you reply to people who do this? He goes, I don't like, he just chooses not to. I'm like, man, that's pretty freeing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, I love that. And, um, this is a question I I like to ask all my guests is what would you say, what would be like one tip you'd give to an individual middle-aged individual looking to get maybe like almost like rewind, right. Looking Mm -hmm. to get their body back to what it once was 10, 15 years ago. I would say. Um, nutrition is the biggest factor. Um, you can't, you can't outwork out, you know, a bad diet. You can't out supplement a bad diet. Uh, but it doesn't eating better. It's simple. It's not always easy, but it's simple. But if you focus there, like with me, I don't have breakfast. I have a good salad for lunch. So it's like, I'm almost there, right? Mm-hmm. I've, I've gotten to, and you have so much good and positive momentum going. You don't want to blow it on a crappy dinner. Um, just, I, I would say, focus on the nutrition for your health and, and the stuff we talked about earlier. The one thing that every health and diet and doctor will agree with is the processed carbs, reduce that as much as possible. You, you right. start lowering that and getting rid of that. And you're going to start seeing results too. Um, It's not about being ultra restrictive and saying, I can never have a cookie again the rest of my life. Um, Just about making smarter choices. Yeah. No, I love that. And um, before we end, why don't you tell people we're the best place. I know you got freedom and rewind. Where's the best place to find you and learn about your companies. Just visit, visit uh, rewind co like rewind company, R E W I N D C O.com. Um, and check out, we've created the world's best tasting greens, um, by far check out thousands of reviews. Uh, yeah, I saw that new flavors like pineapple. We have cherry, uh, we have peach. So do you mix uh, those with anything you mix them? Yeah. With? I mean, yeah. they, they taste incredible just in water. Uh, right. just, okay. it, you got, I promise you guys, you'll be shocked. You know what I'm going to do? I'll, I'll create a, uh, I'll create a special coupon code what should i use brian like so the, we'll know we came from the podcast what coupon code should we use um I guess something i don't know get lean okay or- get lean type in get lean at checkout uh and we'll give you 20 percent off your, your your order so and get I'll- lean it'll you'll apply the discount code 20 percent off um everything 
but Not try perfect. the greens and see how you feel. You're going to love the taste. I have them cold. I also have them hot. So I'll add it to a mug of hot water, stir it. Mm. And it's like, <laughs> it's, it tastes better than coffee. It's, it's the greatest uh, taste. And we have, it has 50 superfoods. Uh, it has all these the great seaweeds like kelp and spirulina and chlorella. Um, has berries. We've jammed everything in there. And uh, no Notice artificial that. flavors, no artificial sweeteners. Um, and has nine grams of, of protein as well. So give it a shot. Rewind Co. and use Get Lean. Uh, at checkout. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'll put that in the show notes. And um, I know you won't say, but I also I'll just say you're owner of freedom. If you are looking yeah. to become an entrepreneur, I, I, I notice you're you're having it's it's just a free membership. It's a well. Well, actually, have them have them go to ryanlee.com because I'm going to okay. be doing more stuff there. Go okay. to ryan r y a n l e e dot com. If I were okay. talking business because I'm working on my next book, oh, check that out. Yeah, I think yeah. you guys are going to like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, a lot of great info, Ryan. I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Well, thank you for having me. And I, and, uh, I wish you continued success and everyone watching this. Um, keep it simple, small steps, and uh, celebrate every win. I agree. I agree. Well, thanks again, Ryan. And uh, we will definitely be in touch. I appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. Hey, Get Lean, Eat Clean Nation. Are you a man between the ages of 40 and 60 years old looking to lose inches around your waist? have significantly more energy throughout the day and gain muscle all while minimizing the risk of injuries? Well, I'm looking for three to five people to work one-on-one with in my Fat Burner Blueprint Signature Program, which I've developed by utilizing my 15 years experience in the health and fitness space. This program is designed specifically for those committed to making serious progress towards their health goals over the next six months. We will focus on sleep, stress, nutrition, meal timing, and building lean muscle. If this sounds like a fit for you, email me at brian at briangrin.com with the subject line blueprint. That's brian at briangrin.com with the subject line blueprint. Thanks for listening to the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. I understand there are millions of other podcasts out there and you've chosen to listen to mine and I appreciate that. Check out the show notes at briangrin.com for everything that was mentioned in this episode. Feel free to subscribe to the podcast and share it with a friend or family member that's looking to get their body back to what it once was. Thanks again and have a great day.